only a half-filled hall for one of the finest welterweight fights seen in a British ring. But we're showing you what the stay-at-homes missed. The almost invincible speed and stamina of champion Hermeside Henry in the light shorts against the iron-cool courage and determination of Britain's up-and-coming Ernie Roderick. You're watching a fight that all in all is a brilliant feat of arms, fists and timing. Armstrong belongs to a long line of Negro champions and tonight he's boxing better than ever. A little dark, mighty atom, vibrant with energy, attacking unceasingly, boring in with his head down, hardly ever giving the other fellow a chance of hitting out against the amazing machine gun fire of the Negro's fist. In fact, as long as Henry's in the ring, Ernie just can't keep out of arm's way. For the first five rounds, Roderick stands up to it like a champion in his own right. And at times it even looks as if a knockout may put a stop to the Negro's invincible progress. But against that rock of Gibraltar stance, those driving shoulders, that flying rain of fists, Roderick begins to slip back. In the sixth round, it looks as if Roderick is trying to take a breather, and Armstrong piles on the pressure. And still, Roderick fights back so well that even the champion is surprised and staggered. In the seventh round, Roderick is hitting harder than ever, and the crowd is on its feet. While in the ring, both boys are so excited they fail to hear the gong. Five rounds, Roderick's chance of landing a finishing blow seemed to be slowly fading. People are beginning to wonder whether Armstrong can keep up that amazing display of vitality. But like Felix, he keeps on walking. But in the last round, Roderick has little hope of doing more than lasting out. But even that's an achievement against the flying phenomenon with the shining dark skin. But now the end is inevitable. Armstrong holds his title, 